After a while, the little voice in your head says, Why am I watching this? Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show where we look at Arizona numbers and no, this is not Arizona. This is Washington State. I'm still traveling. My, my brother's house is a beautiful backyard and I apologize for being late. It takes me a little time to get rolling in some of these remote locations, but I do have good Wi-Fi today, so I'm pleased with that. And uh, thank you, Chelsea, Stephanie, and Bryce for covering for me while I'm out of town. So if anybody needs any help, we have able hands out there. So what is going on? Boy, there's a lot. And uh, I'm going to cover a couple of things. One is just the simple um, look at the market and the inventory and what's going on and what we thought was going to happen and what's happening. We're saying, is fall going to be better for buyers? Uh, fall is officially just a couple weeks away. So here it is, the 7th of September. <clears throat> you roll back the tape. I thought September was going to see some pretty high inventory numbers. And I'll show you why in a minute. And when in fact, we're not seeing that there seems to be a stall. Now, some of it may be just this new variant out there making things slow down. Curiously, I'm in a small town, Washington State and Clown County. Get this. The county health director says that you can't go into a bar or a restaurant without proof of immunization. And it's right during Labor Day weekend. And a lot of people just traveled here for the holiday week and they didn't bring their immunization cards with them. I had to have mine emailed to me from Safeway. And so last night we go to go downtown to go to my favorite pizza parlor down here. Nope. Take out only go downtown. There's two or three other places we like all of them closed. It's like a protest movement. Everybody said, I, nope, I'm just going to shut down. One little lady uh, working out at this uh, lodge out of Lake Crescent said, everybody's going to just yell at me. People are out here on vacation. And she goes, and they weren't expecting to show their vaccination cards and I'm supposed to ask for them. So it's a curious time up here. This whole town, when it comes to restaurants and bars right now, is it's just locked down. It's just crazy. So what's going on here? Take a look at this. Now, keep in mind, this is Labor Day numbers when you look at a seven-day moving average. And that red line shows how many homes went under contract the past seven days. You can see it's considerably lower. And inventory went up and then it came down a hair down here. Today, we're sitting at 7,100 homes on the market. And we had 3,800 new homes come on in the past seven days with only 3,300 go under contract. Well, in comparison, see this little dip down here in sales? That's Memorial Day. This is 4th of July. And look, we come down to the same number. This is going to look identical to 4th of July when this shakes out in a few days. So you can't take a holiday and say, now we have an inventory trend. So we need to watch that carefully. But here's what it does tell you. People don't buy homes during holidays. So if you're being outbid and you're facing a lot of competition, when should you buy? During a holiday weekend. The number isn't huge, but think of this, getting up to Thanksgiving. What if you went out looking for homes the Sunday before Thanksgiving and you found a home you write, write the offer on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving because you're going to be the only one. Nobody else is going to write an offer the day before a holiday. You won't have a bidding war. So if you're thinking about purchasing a home, kick that around. If you're thinking about selling a home, the holidays are not necessarily that bad. So we'll see what happens. Um, <clears throat> we thought that the inventory was going to come climbing up, and I'm going to show you why we thought that. And I'm going to pull this up here. Bear with me. I'm going to get uh, this window here. I'm going to. It's so much easier at home, like I've said before, when you have uh, um, a dual monitors. So I got to move something here. Okay, we're looking at the right stuff here yet? No, probably not. Hang in there. We go to Chrome tab. We're going to go to the Cromford report. Bingo, here we go. Active inventory. See right here? This was like the last week of July, first week of August, how things were going up and up, especially in this trajectory. And we thought we'd be at 2020 numbers way back here by August 1st, and we were still climbing up. Now we have just plateaued. We're just staying steady. And that's uh, that's a bit of a bit of a problem, not a problem per se, but it's against what we thought was going to happen. So um, we have 
we thought we'd be at well over 7,000, 8,000 homes coming in right now. We're only at 6,753 and we have been stuck in the zone. Now there are some price points that are going up and down, especially in the 400,000 range. And in a couple of weeks, we should see if most of that is iBuyers like Open Door, Offer Pad, and Zillow. My suspicion is it is. Um, so buyers have backed off, but listings have stalled. And I don't know why. I wish I did. I wish I could tell you, but I don't know why. Now, in Core Logic here, I'm going to share another screen with you. There is a um, story here about um, forbearances. Okay. So, forbearances we thought was going to be a big number. And we're looking at. Um, no, this is going to be core logic. This is a core logic prediction. Now, remember core logic. They said in 2020 that in 2021, our real estate prices would be down minus 1.6%. We were up 30. So today they're saying home price gains expected to slow to 2.7% next year. I, they don't have any street cred. So I don't know. I, <laughs> you tell me what, what you think is going to happen. So where's that going to come from? Well, if we look at some of our inventory and uh, not so much our inventory, but here I'm going to pull this up again and say 400,000 homes enter the final month in forbearance. They're at the end of their 18 month grace period. That's 400,000 homes nationally exit forbearance. Well, what we're seeing is that there's a small percentage of those that literally have to put their home on the market because they can't catch up on their payments. Many of them are just recrafting the loans. So there's nothing in these numbers yet that are alarming. Nothing that shows that inventory is going to come creeping up. So the other thing that we need to look at too is remember that right now the rental moratorium ended in at the end of July. So if you're a mom and pop renter and you've got a rental out there and it ended in the month of July, you're probably going to give a 30 day notice to the person that's not paying your rent and they got to be out this week first week of September. Are they going to prep the home and get it ready to sell in October? Could be. We don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, thank you, Do Vegas. I appreciate being on here as well. Um, it could be that we could see a blip in inventory when it comes to rental housing. How much? We don't know. I don't suspect it's going to be a huge number because even though they got burned and they weren't getting rent, rent prices have gone up. So if they can stomach it, um, you know, they could have a good return on investment, but keep in mind, many of these people were just dipping into their savings to hang on to their house during the, uh, during the moratorium and they may not be able to afford to keep it as a rental, but there are buzzards flying around waiting to pick those up to use as rentals should they, you know, choose to sell. So these homes may come on the market or they may just get scooped up quietly by investors waiting in the wings, especially Open Door and Zillow, which are buying homes and selling them to people to use as rentals. So that could happen. The other thing that's not being tracked that may raise its ugly head in a couple of years, and that depends on the tourist industry. How many VRBOs and Airbnbs do we have in the Phoenix area? I'm guessing it's a pretty big, big number. Now you remember back in March when spring training was canceled, we had a slew of listings come up because people were buying two and three homes, using them for Airbnbs, now spring training's gone. Nobody's going to rent their homes. There were these homes that were sales that were fully furnished. They had to hurry up and dump them. That could be something out there that if tourism suffers, that we could have a problem. Now, what can make tourism suffer? Who knows? It could be just be anything. And so, you know, people that are buying and using rentals are experts in having rentals, but they know nothing about the tourism industry. So who knows? We're going to see what uh, what's going on with that. I'm going to grab another article here, which I find very interesting, which helps you kind of play what if. And uh, this article is about China. And um, let's see, it's uh, a highly obvious yet ignored threat. Talking about China. So China has this problem where I'm going to scroll through this just a little bit here. They have management, uh, they have these real estate holdings out there that are propped up by the Chinese government. They have literally built cities that nobody's moved into. They build roads nobody drives on. They have gas stations that look really cool, but there's no gas there. Um, there is a rush to unload bonds issued by this company. Some were selling for a little 26% of their face value. And China had to close the bond market. They had to stop it. So 
The Huang Asset Management released a long delayed earning report showing it had lost 15 billion last year and that its debt to equity ratio at one point totaled an eye popping 1,133%. The Chinese economy has been suffering from excessive non financial corporate debt for a long time. That could be a problem down the road. Why is that a problem for us? What do we care what happens in China? Well, um, you know, China, 35%, I think, of their uh, GDP is imports and exports. Um, so it could make markets crash all around the world because their corporate debt is not just held by Chinese government. It's held by a lot of people, including some people in the U.S. Could be a problem, could be something to watch. I'm not an economist. Silver Rose Gaming said, if prices continue to climb, does the affordability issue become a factor where it puts the market in danger of a sharp value decline? Um, the short answer is, I don't think so. I think what you'll see is the market starts to balance as unaffordability starts to come up, then buyers start pulling back. It never turns into a sudden crash. So unaffordability can show its, you know, its, its stripes. And right now, price decreases are happening at a rate of, and I'm going to show you here, it's happening at a rate of 17%, I believe. Um, there was an article, I got to find it, um, rather than dig around and try to find, oh, here it is called FOMO. So I'm going to go back to my tab here and show this to you. And um, the first thing that happens is the expectations of buyers have to come down to a realistic level. And why is that? Well, because the buyers are no longer interested. And if they're no longer interested, then they're going to have to pull down and show where, you know, price it to, to the real market level. So rising fear of missing out among sellers could help the trend continue. So it's saying the share of sellers who made listing price adjustments grew 0.7% year over year and 17.3% of active inventory, the highest in 21 months. 17% of people had to go, oops, I can't get this price. I'll have to pull it down to here. We've been tracking about 750 homes having a price decrease every week. This weekend, it was 650. Not a lot going on. So you're seeing uh, people starting to pull back on their on their prices. And that is kind of a symptom and an adjustment of people adjusting to buyers sitting on their hands a little bit. The other unknown that we have as we look going forward is, um, let's see, boop, boop, boom. The, here's some more going on as we cruise the news, the housing supply. We're still down 2.1% year over year. This is from last year to last, you know, um, 2020. So comparing this month to the same month last year, when 2020 was already at historic lows, we're still lower than last year. Median days on market is 15, but here's the housing demand. Homes with price drops, 12%. Sales to list price, 102.3. So people are still getting a little bit over their list price in total. And here's uh, the sales price. And the most competitive cities are Aurora, Colorado, Littleton, Colorado. But I think at the very top here shows you that Gilbert, is up 30.4%. The core logic predicted it would be down 1.6. That didn't work out too good, did it? So, <laughs> so the inventory numbers that we're seeing right here, which is 67.53, we certainly didn't expect that to be stuck at that number. That number has to climb. We're not seeing it. What's fall going to be like? Well, here we are in September. I thought, and the numbers showed that we were going to start seeing more inventory coming in right now, and it's just not there. And I think it's pandemic driven. What we have is some opportunities for inventory to come in with rentals that are going to be put on the market, possibly some forbearances, but I don't think so. It'll look to be very small. If the pandemic starts to loosen up, people will be putting their homes on the market because they're going to want to sell before the holidays. November and December are going to be dismal because people just don't list in those two months. So if you're a buyer, you're available homes for sale in those two months it could be pretty low if you're a seller october could be a great time for you to sell because there are still buyers out there wishing you'd put your home on the market so it's going to remain a difficult thing to watch prices are still going to go up though folks if our sales remain where they are and our listings remain where they are you're going to see price increases are we going to see them going up at three and a half percent a month like they were in april and may no they may be going up like one and a half percent, but they're still going to be going up. 
don't get confused with people reducing their asking price with the actual price growth of real estate because it's still there. Until we get a flood of new homes, that's what's going to happen. I'll try to be on tomorrow. I'm driving out west of here. I hope they have Wi-Fi. If they don't, I will let you know. Everybody take on and have a great Tuesday. Thank you.